All right, so it seems that we have two viewers right now. Hello, everyone. So if you want, you can try to, you know, you can type your name so I can give you a sh big shout out. We have three people right now streaming with us. Good morning, teachers. And if you're here in the, in the U.S., good evening. It's 7.02 p.m. my time in Arizona. And I am also waiting for my guests. And it seems that I have... Paul Vern right now. Oh, what happened? All right. Hello, Bess. How are you? I can't hear you. What happened? Let's see. Uh, let me check. Hello? Oh, what happened? I can he I cannot hear you. Hello? I can I cannot Hello? hear you. Hello? Can you hear okay. me? Okay. All right, I can hear you now. All right. How are you? <laughs> I'm great despite the, you know, that hell of a week of class for the first full week rather. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was crazy. Well, it, it's a good thing you survived one week. Yay, yes. Finally, I survived. <laughs> Luckily. You, you, you survived one week. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And we have Sir Keith and Jevy. Um, Keith, uh, you know, he's uh, always with us. And Jevy, I believe, is one of your batches uh, mm. uh, from Bepiche as well. Hello, Jevy. And hello. we have hello. seven people hello, hello. now. We're waiting for Sheena. And uh, can we have uh, those people uh, streaming with us? If you can write your name, and so we can give a big shout out. Mm -hmm. So, and, Paul, well, like can you tell us about your week? Can you tell us about your? Can you share some, you know, good things about your week? Some well, of the good things. The, mm -hmm. Well, the good things there are our kids who are really, really showing that they are eager to learn and. That they you know following instructions, uh, following classroom expectations that you've set, that, and te local teachers and helping you out. Even that, even though you're you're from your country, they're very eager to teach you and to you know of how it is really to become um, a, a teacher in the United States. Okay, that's so good. Oh, and we have uh, Sheena as well streaming with us. So Sheena and Paul, uh, this is their second time with me as well. So she, uh, we will be sharing some good things. Good things uh, to be a teacher here in the U.S. How are you, Sheena? I'm good. I'm good. It's not so cold here in Colorado, so it's really, really fun. Thank you. Thank you. How are you so guys? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> You look so you prepared. Are, you're all made up. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> yes. Um, I believe, uh, Mr. Sheena, the, I mean, I'm not sure. You, you haven't started your class yet, right? No, not yet. We will be starting in a week time. Uh, no, no, no. It's actually two weeks. Two weeks from now. In the okay. middle of oh, lucky you. <laughs> well, we'll be starting in August 1st. So we just had our professional development for a week. And it's been like, uh, I'm not prepared for it. But, you know, decorating and everything, preparing my room. Because my, I consider my room as my bedroom. So I kind of... Wanted to make sure that it's a safe place to stay and uh, comfortable all the time with the kids. So it will be my first time to prepare my classroom if I'll be having a classroom because I believe this year I won't be handling like the English traditional setup. Uh, my principal was telling me I'll be an interventionist or the credit recovery teacher. So I don't know if I'm going to have my classroom. <laughs> credit recovery. So that is so easy. <laughs> 
Hopefully, hopefully. Okay, we have 20 people right now uh, as of the moment streaming with us. So maybe let's ask Paul first since, you know, this is his first um, first school gear. Can you tell us mm -hmm. or can you tell the viewers, Paul, what they do? What are the things that you prepare? What did you do uh, mm -hmm. before the school starts? Okay, well, I'm being put in the hot hot seat huh um <laughs> before the school year started i of course we had some professional development with all the new teachers in the district and uh, they gave uh, they introduced us the curriculum and how to technology integrated so we really have to um learn how to you so a, a day of the training was provided still you'll need more time to get in and also, after that, we also had like a professional development training for the or, or yeah, in school with the principal and the rest of the team. Also, on those days, like we were given time to prepare for our class set up um, bulletin board displays. You know, you had to really think of creatively. Um, with those bulletin board displays, which are the subject that you are teaching. And in my case, I'm teaching ELA. And of course, and also, <laughs> um, what should call this one? Treasures for Teachers. I don't know if you have in your area. Treasures for Teachers. That's what uh, Fil uh, other Filipino are teaching me to go. And we went there, actually. and. But we've got that free, free uh, one whole bag for like five dollars, and up with um, a lot of stuff, everything that you can fit in that one bag. Dollars. It doesn't matter how many or how much weight you would have for that. That we went there, and, and also, uh, well, other teachers were like they're like um, been there. They've been there there for like a long a long time already and there were borders that they use for bulletin board displays and they were very generous enough they are extra borders but unfortunately I, I wasn't able to use them a lot i wasn't able to utilize them because they were limited and one border um i, I have different styles of borders on hand so i cannot you know, utilize. That's all. That's right. That's all that's happened. Yeah, because here in the U.S., everything is very convenient. So you can just go to the store. They have this um, teacher store where in uh, the moment you get in, you have all the stuff that you will be needing in your in your classroom. They have gazillions of uh, borders. They have a lot of those class rules, class routines posters, everything that you will be uh, that you will be needing in your classroom. So that's great. But then of course at your expense. But in my class in, in the district where I am, well they they are prepared. They have uh they're giving it to us. But of course if you want to go extra mile then you have to pay for it. So well, in professional our, development there was land provided for the as far as bulletin board displays is concerned. So yeah I had to like yes so how about you uh machina what's your powerhouse preparation for the school year just in, 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 in case you will have a classroom by the way i just would like to shout out sir rp he's here again with us and uh my principal uh beware so it's just my principal from uh from um in essential beaver hello guys so yes uh machina what's your powerhouse oh, preparation yeah. Uh, literally just came back from vacation, right? Um, it's just my first week of being back in, in Gypsum, Colorado. Um, but my plan is that, uh, my, my, my department had actually handed over last time, like a compilation of the, the things that I need to be familiar with and what are those that I will be teaching, um, for the credit recovery classes. And so I have been scanning them and making myself familiar with those. 
However, when it comes to like the classroom set, I'm still like figuring out what I need to 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 do um, if I'll be given if I'll be given my own classroom. Um, it's just now my preparations like I'm making use of the of the vacation for me to have like uh, all the strength and energy comes the uh, the start of the school year because we need that we need that so yeah definitely definitely <laughs> yes uh, I don't say so Paul have all those energy yeah that's sure. why we had Paul get ready before his first school year. Right, so he had mm -hmm. the Vegas knife and everything. Yeah. Well, not that enough, but um, for sure we will well, do it again. Well, I prepare for this because even though I, I was like here for like a couple of weeks, start still I am not prepared. You will not be that prepared for this. I'm telling you, I until you're there. Yes, right. You took the words out of my mouth, and you. <laughs> You can never say you're prepared until you have the the work um, in front of you, right? So, yeah, that's why when I came back last week for our professional development as well, we had our professional development. Everybody's like not prepared because, of course, we all need those vacation the two months at least. Uh, well, I can't tell it's not enough, but at least uh, we were able to freshen up and. Uh, get all the power nap that we wanted to um so what i just realized when i uh i'm making my lesson plan today i'm making my lesson plan wow. <laughs> and it seems that oh i'm thinking i it seems that i don't know what am i going to do on my first day uh this will be my fifth year of teaching here in the US but it's like um i tried to go over with all my uh my old stuff my presentation and everything for for my first year and um it's it's like i'm out of trend already like because on your first week this is the time we're in you should start strong well actually not first week but then the first first two weeks how are you going to do your lesson or how are you going to do your class? You're going to discuss classroom routines and procedures, not making them bored. So I, um, I, I check online, what did I, what should I do? And um, I found this one bell ringer actually that I think it, it really relates to the generation right now, like the moment they get in. So what are you going, uh, what I'm thinking is like, make a hashtag to describe yourself. So something like that, they love, they, they're they always in Instagram, they're always in um, Snapchat. So I said, mm, this sounds good, maybe I'll do that, like describe a hashtag of yourself and then maybe do it, oh, this is a cool teacher. Because on your first day, after you discuss your classroom routines and procedures, the, the students, are going uh they're going to think uh this is the teacher that i'm not going to mess with or this is the teacher that i'm going to mess with because they know how they will know how you present your procedures and routines were you able to do that paul well well um the school prepared already the slides for for the classroom procedures because you know we set the the whole rules for, for for this every period when the class started, we had to pre present the slides. So we, we were basically to how to start the class because the slides were given to us already. And we presented them. Um, well, the good thing was the entire school, all the all the faculty um, on the same page. And we were presenting these and on day two, we were like presenting our classroom rules. And that's what made, made the students really, really understand what were the classroom expectations in class. But of course, their middle schools, middle schoolers, uh, they're of the classroom procedures that you're going to set. But it just takes a lot of time standing for you to <laughs> oh yeah oh, you know yeah. Uh, understand right. 
the the kind of mental Yes. And by the way, to all our viewers right now as streamers, um, Miss Sheena, Paul, and I were all in the uh, ELA teachers. Uh, Paul and I were middle school teachers. I'm teaching seventh grade and Paul is teaching seventh and eighth. And uh, Miss Sheena is teaching high school, right? I'm not sure what grade is she going to teach right now, but she just mentioned she might be one of the interventionists in the school, but she's in Colorado. Paul and I were from uh, from Arizona. Mm -hmm. And would, would you like to read those uh, teachers, uh, Ms. Sheena? Oh, yeah. Shout out from Mr. Elizalde. Yeah, we've got um, Mr. Elizalde Cabual. Hi, thank you for watching. And we also have um, Joy Villarino. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Hi. Thank you for watching from Eastern Samar. Thank you so much. Yep. Um. Yeah. You are aiming to be here uh, as a teacher too someday. So yeah, just um reach keep, out if you need help. If you have any other question. Yeah. Right. Right. And uh, exactly. One. We also have Miss Josel Bongok. Is it right? So. Um, thank you so much. Also watching. Um, it's from Lady. And then we have um, Ruby Jean. Hello, teachers. Oh, we, she, she has a question. Um, yeah. What classroom routines, rules are applicable for eighth graders? Okay, who wants to answer that? <laughs> what classroom routines, rules are applicable for eighth graders? Um well, let's have it from the veteran who's been here for like, it's her fifth year. So go ahead. Yes, it's her fifth year. <laughs> Share your. You say it. Life. It's the fifth year, right? Okay, let me, okay, let me pull up my PowerPoint. Well, I'm not going to share my PowerPoint, but you know, I just, I'm just going to read it. Or maybe one. Huh? Yeah, while you are, while you are like pulling it up, there's just one thing perhaps very quick that I want to say. Mm -hmm. um in relation to that there like rules and routines it would actually base on like the behavior of the kids right so there's no really such as like certain set of rules or routines um you can set rules and routines in your classroom on the very first day especially if you're if you're new here i'm um, like what i had last year However, you need to be very flexible when you see that those rules and routines are not effective because we have like, of course, different different um, uh, learners and different kinds of attitudes in the classroom. And so you, you, you have to be very flexible and adapt the, uh, the kind of, of ways that you are going to use depending on the kind of students that you have in a class. It does, do I make sense? Right, guys? Yes, mm -hmm. so, yes, that makes sense. A lot of sense if Ed, Anne has like more things to add to that go ahead and yeah because of course what works in my classroom may not work for you right or what works for this particular group may not work for with other with other group of class as well mm -hmm. so exactly. you, yeah so classroom routines and procedures um it it depends how are you going to like i i just want to really want to share this before I, I i will give the classroom routines that i have during the training there's actually a question there if you want to answer true or false it says this is this applies for the middle school middle schoolers you know for the middle school teachers it says don't smile at your students until after christmas is an effective way, so until Christmas, if you're, that's seven and eight, so six, seven, and eight. Don't smile at your students until after Christmas is an effective way to establish your control in the classroom and to demonstrate to students the seriousness of your class. So you will be standing there. No, I mean, don't smile at all and stand still, be strict. That's what they said until Christmas. We were asked, is it true or false? And most of us answered false, though technically it should be true. <laughs> I mean, yes. they, 
if you want to build a uh, build relationship with your students then you should they said they should be a, you should be approachable to your to your students the first day the first week of your class like hi oh yeah that sounds great oh don't worry i can really help you with that but you know that those are the strategy actually of an effective teacher i i uh, i actually talked to one of my colleagues here she's been teaching for 32 years in the same district yes she's wow. an, she's our, our art teacher and i asked her how did you do it like for 32 years how were you able to manage it the same group of i mean not really the same group of students but just in the same district and she said um, I did not really have the same classroom routines and procedures every school year. Like every year I'm changing it because I am I am going to deal to different kinds of students every year. And she is right because remember what happened during the pandemic? So those kids, they're not in the, in the classroom set up for a year. Or for more than a year. So, what is the cl the classroom procedure and routines to those group of kids that know how to act will not apply to these kids that experience um, the pandemic. And I can say, actually, those are the kids that I had the worst teaching career here in the U.S. But I'm not going to give up because of that. Because we're teachers, we're what do you call that? We're fighters, right? We're fighters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're fighters. And we never give up. Yeah, that's right. We don't give up. So that's why we always we always find ways. So I think the best classroom routines and procedures that you will tell to you, that you will incorporate to your students is I mean, I just have I um I think I just have five not really five so what I'm, I'm telling them is they should know how you should teach them how to enter in like what i had on my board is enter the classroom quietly and then the second one is um take out all the needed materials in the classroom and then the third one is take the most direct route to your uh seat because you know they always go around, and then do their I, you know, their bell work, and then five work silently. That's just the simple routines that I am doing in my classroom. Five, so that it's easy for them to remember it. But then the rest, how to sharpen the pencil, how to get how to get out from the classroom if they want to use the bathroom that's you know you have to discuss it to them as well so those are just the good things that i'm doing but then the bathroom passes um i was able to observe one of one classroom before and uh they had this he had this bathroom pass but then every time the kid will get out he the students need to let him sign and then, so he's in the middle of the class, so he needs to sign the paper or the bathroom mm -hmm. pass, so that will interrupt the class, right? But then, maybe on your first day, if you already inform your students that, hey, if you wanted to use the restroom, this is our sign, like, oh, I wanted to use, like, restroom, raise your hand. Mm -hmm. And then if you acknowledge it, then that's the time that the kid will just go out and then sign out if you had if you have a sign out sheet. And then they will just go and then come back. And then you don't need to stop your class and sign sign it in. The, uh, if you know how to incorporate that to your class, so that will not interrupt your class at all. You don't need to sign any paper. They just know the routine. So I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I regarding the bathroom pass, one thing that gave me is like that light that I don't know what's it called a light with the double sided tape at the back, and then you put it on the wall. And loved doing this. That if they get the bathroom pass, it's one on one side of my table, the front part, and um, I have a sign up sheet there. They get the bathroom pass, they sign up, the light, and it turns on. After, uh, and then going back, they turn off the light also in 
the time that they went in, and the light is off, uh, and it is over for the entire class that somebody's outside, and no nobody can get out, no one is allowed, and no other student is allowed to use a bathroom pass because the using the bathroom pass. So if that one student returns and turn off the light, turns off the light, they can use the bathroom pass again because because the uh, the student who went out and in the classroom. So it's like vacant, occupied, mm -hmm. and the light mm -hmm. is yeah, red. like that, like something that. Like. But is it's just one something that your light. Light. school give it to you or what? No, it's just one. Thing. She had that idea, and she saw that from YouTube. I guess that's what she. Said. She shared to me and shared it to us too. And she had like a couple of lights, and she gave it out to her teachers. But luckily, it got picked. Yeah, there you go. So that's YouTube and everything. That's mm -hmm. why teachers we don't stop learning. We we still mm -hmm. do research, right? I I feel like um, mine is way much easier because the school district has its own tool for us to track like the e-hall path. We do have what we call the e-hall path. So it's electronic. Mm -hmm. And so the kids will just tell me, hey, Miss Torre, um, I'm, I need to go to the bathroom or go somewhere like in the library, somewhere else in, to the nurse. So they'll just have to request for an e-hall pass and they cannot leave the room until I approve it. Yeah, so wow. that's, this, yeah. that's the tool that we have. Yeah, it's an e-hall. You guys can suggest it to your school district if you want to. That would make your life way much easier. So yes, it's only yes. One case. That's a lot easier. The I mean, the house, the school is um, has camera all over, as well, you know, everywhere as well. And then the school district, I think they just installed like a 3D camera in our school. So I don't know how, <laughs> like 3D, like it's not... And <laughs> every time and, they will see the picture of the kid. Yeah, and that actually makes our work easier. They'll just have to request it online. It's a, it's a, it's just a web-based one, um, and then they'll just have to ask for approval. And uh, we cannot actually approve two kids, uh, two kids at a time. So it's just going to be just one kid. And if they are outside for a long period, it will actually change its color until such time that the admin office will be alerted that this kid is like away from the classroom for a long time. And it could be a reason mm -hmm. for them not to get e-hall pass later on. So that's yeah. what you call technology. Bravo oh, to your district. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good job to yeah. your district for thinking about that. Yep. And, and if I may as well, like share the routines that I have. So last year was like a struggling uh, like process for me, knowing the fact that I got here like mid of September so the kids already have their mindset of like the, the, the previous teacher and they have a point of comparison of what kind of teacher they're going to have after the sub teacher that they had. But I have this routine that I think I had like the rules, the same with you and teacher Ed, um, that I have the rules and like what are you what you guys need to do um, in, in, in my class. But one thing that I don't know if you guys would want to use this is that um, I am known at school to be the rapport teacher. So the first thing that I do is I prepare um, a rapport question. I got this from one, one of our PDs, but I had a tweak on it. So I would flash it on my monitor and there would be like, um, there's a question, let's say, if there's one thing that you want to change in your life, what would that be? Or you can say, uh, there's a question also that um, in order for you to answer this, find a person who has like the same height as yours or the same color as your top. So something like that. So they would, I would give them like, five to 10 minutes to go around. That's that's a way for them to build like good relationship within themselves. And aside from that, I also have like rules. Um, here in the US, you must admit it, Paul, you will know it. There are things that we need to control in our class. Number one is the language of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, yes. how disruptive they are, right? And I'm not really quite sure. There's a, these are like the two things that I, I, I personally am like abhorring in my class. And so I set rules and I would say like, if you become disruptive, oh no, I think another one, the third one is like, you are humiliating your, your, your classmates, like make, making them feel not comfortable, right? Making them feel that the classroom is not safe. So those are the three things. So I will I would tell them that the first 
time that you do this in a month, it would be a verbal warning. Number two is that I will send a report, second offense of any of these three. I will mm -hmm. send an email to the principal um, for you to have a have a meeting with, with them, either the assistant principal or the principal. And number three, it's a meeting with the principal and with your parents. How is that? So something like that. So, mm -hmm. I, and I, I actually implemented it to the rowdiest class that I had. Usually the last period are the rowdiest because they're so excited to go home. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's one thing that I think I would still be implementing this, this school year. Well, yes, the last hour class, this is the class that always wanted to go home. They're always excited to go. And the, always class, in a before the, and the class before the lunchtime. Those are the group of kids that always, always excited to go home and to get out, especially for lunch as well. And mm -hmm. talking about that, the, con uh, the consequences of the kids. Well, yes, the most important thing that you need to do the moment that the kid will disrupt the class, like shut it off right away on that moment. Don't wait for like after five minutes to stop that because the kids will not remember it anymore. What did I do? I did not do that. Like, they are good with that, especially with the middle school students. So right away, shut it up, you know, shut down, tell them, tell that kid to stop. And, you know, you know, I'm not going to tolerate that in my class. We're having a good conversation here right now. You have a choice. Do you want to stay in my classroom or you want to get out? But you know what? I really want you in my classroom. So stop that and let's go. Like something like that, quick and not interrupting the class at all. But then if you are going to give them a lecture, like you ruined your class. You were not able to, to continue your lesson already because, I mean, I remember back in the Philippines, I always love to give lecture to my students if they misbehave and everything, but that does not work in here. So be quick right away. Shut it down. Let's go. Even though sometimes if you will, if I will say, I really want you in my class, but at the back of my head, oh my God, if you only knew, but then that's how we work. That's how teachers should work. Right. And, um, I would like as well to remind everyone with regards to the email. Yes, we love to email parents. I mean, we should email the parents. But um, I believe during our training, the professional development right now, I just forgot that there is something new about the uh, Arizona state and everything, law. Um, or let's say you're going to call and then there's a voicemail. For example, I'm calling to Paul's parent and then Paul is very disruptive in the class and then no one answered the call. It's just a voicemail. Oh, hey, um, Mr. P, you know, I'm calling. I'm the teacher of Paul because, you know, he's been very disruptive in the class, blah, blah, blah. All the negative things that he did, you said it over the phone. We should not do that mm -hmm. because it could be that the phone number that was entered on the profile of the kid is not you know, it could be that there's a problem. It could be it's not the number of the parent or for some reason, there's just a problem when they put when they enter the, the phone number and you, you were you left a voicemail to someone else and then they're hearing and then they're going to hear that. So that's not a good thing. Or at the same time, when you're sending an email sending an email telling them that this is a blah 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 and everything no maybe uh so what i'm doing if i leave a message on the voicemail and like i'm you know i'm mrs Gravis. i am the i am the ela teacher of your daughter i'm calling because i wanted to talk something about the behavior about how she acted in the class if you have time maybe you can give me a call back something like that mm -hmm. so don't tell a story what did that particular kid do in your classroom because it could be that email or that phone number is not associated with them so mm. that's a big thing already that you spill out everything so please teachers don't do that okay so let's move on there's a lot of we have like a hundred viewers right now so no. <laughs> that's a lot <laughs> All right, so Miss Cha is learning from all of us as well. So thank you. I hope yeah, you really learn from us. And Miss Gabriella just wanted to say hello. And Paul, do you want to uh, read this from Bell? Oh, hello. Thank you for sharing and airing this episode. As I'll be teaching mid school also at New Mexico. Well, welcome, Miss Bell. Evan, Evan, welcome. Um, 
Yes, it's it, New should, Mexico. It, 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 sh, sh, is this your first year? Yeah, I will be teaching mid school. Okay. Yeah, okay. so well, you'll... good luck and God bless. Yeah, so good luck to all of you guys. Oh. And uh, Sir Japen, that, that's one of my uh, colleagues as well in the Philippines too. And Sir JR, hello, watching from Ponte Vedra, my hometown. Um, Sir MJ wanted to share something, avoid power struggle in the classroom. I agree to that. And um, let's see, what who else? <laughs> what? Let's see, who's... Sherry, hello, teachers. Thank you for giving us some guidelines. Well, yeah, guidelines that even Paul is new. So, but then, you know, yeah. it's like, it's... I got um, a lot of... I got a lot to learn. It's a long just time, process. Yeah, just timely. Perfect. And I know there's a bunch of teachers already, like, uh, they're traveling right now. There's there's two teachers, I believe, traveling from the Philippines right now, and they will be here tomorrow morning. And so hopefully they can um, get it over with. And, Paul, will you please uh, tell what did Miss Lerma say? Well, hi, hmm. I'm Lerma. Hi, teachers. I'm now watching from Texas. Everything here is so overwhelming. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. I feel <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are over 100 pro tips, the do's and don'ts. Thank you. Well, yeah, yeah that's something that, that my teacher, um, which was <laughs> one, uh, <laughs> Sheena. Well, yeah, the, the do's and don'ts. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That, so we could not really tell everything because we might not have enough time for that but mm -hmm. you know we, mm -hmm. we will really try and then that's why um what you call this we're doing this and uh we're not really perfect we're not really the expert but we are trying because this is not the culture that you know, we were into. This is all new to us. And I think there's a question for you, Machina. What How is it? Thanks for the teachers. Is the example given a story? Uh, what is that? A bell? Bell ringer. Ringer. Like writing prompts. Yep. Where, Where is, is it, it now? I can't see. A bell ringer. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay, um, I would consider yes, uh, because it's some, those are the things that we mustn't be tolerating in the class, right? Um, which I have been trying to actually uh, like chime in while we are talking. Uh, and I would couple it with what Anne said earlier that when we implement something, right? Like not smiling until Christmas, I would agree with that. When you ask it, I would say yes, because <laughs> Fear will not take you seriously. You are so pleasant. I'm telling you, right? So yeah, those are quite critical things in the classroom that teachers, new teachers here in the U.S. would need to take note of. It is given. We, we have the ability to teach them effectively. We will not be here not to brag if we don't have that that capability, but the most challenging part of being a teacher here is how to show the kids that we own our class, yeah. right? Yes. It is the very person, detrimental. Um, <laughs> we're the queens or the kings of our classroom because they're going to dominate us if you yes. let them feel that yes. they can do it to you. Yeah. That you are the person of authority in your classroom. Don't let them... Um, put, you know, they will really push your buttons. So make sure that you are not going to make scene in your classroom as well. What is really, really, what I am always telling myself is do not argue with the students. Why? Because they all, I mean, the moment you argue with the kids in front of everybody, you lose already. So some of them will think that, oh, hey, I can just do this to Miss Graves' class. So I, we will do this every day so that she will stop from teaching us because she will just do this and do that. So make sure that you don't really um, engage 
to any argument to the students because the moment you do that, you lose. You're making a scene in your classroom. So make sure that you stop it right away. Whatever her reasons, just stop it. And then um, do the right thing and then proceed to your class. Maybe if you want to call the office right away or you know someone to take her out in your classroom, then do it. But sometimes um, what should really we do is we should know how to own uh, or manage our classroom. You make your principal or your assistant principal your last resort, right? Because the moment you call every time to your principal or to your to your assistant principal, what will the kid will think? Oh, this teacher will just call right away the principal, and then what? So you always call the principal. What are they going to do with the office? So your class. Second, that kid just lose your trust and that kid will not respect you at all because the moment he knew that the moment he will disrupt your class, you will just call the, uh, the principal right away. So make it at your own classroom, but make your, your, your classroom comfortable, safe, and everybody are, are welcome. And I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not really quite sure if I got the, the question by Ruby, like, what's like pro writing prompts she's referring to? <laughs> I'm not no, the one that building your rapport. The oh, oh building okay. rapport for how you see yourself 10 years from now, like what you said a while ago. Is that a bell ringer? <laughs> uh, actually, no. It's just like we do that as a part of the class. It's, a, it's part of our, like, uh, it's just part of the, what do you call that? Um, the routine. It, routine. It's really like, yeah, it's 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 actually it's your it's bell very, Yeah, it's the first thing that we do. Um, I may consider it like that, but I'm I'm not really quite sure. It's just that I I do it just the first part of of the, I I don't wait for them. I do, mm -hmm. I just do it right away. So yeah, yeah. Well, we can consider it as a bell ringer because. Um, you know, while they're do, uh, checking your attendance or something like that. So they have something to do in the classroom. So, yeah, we can consider it as a bell work or a bell ringer. You know, something for them to be busy the moment they get inside your classroom. Because uh, Actually, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, that could be one thing that you guys can do. Um, unfortunately, mine is not that reason. Because um, the goal in doing that is, yeah, of course, so like, calm them down but it's more of like it's really different if a class knowing the fact that here in the u.s kids have their different classmates every period yes and it's really good i'm kind of surprised they, with that setup yeah and it's really and that's the goal sorry go ahead Dan. no i was just you know he said he was surprised about that <laughs> yeah, I, for me, I don't consider it a bell ringer. It's, I consider it something that the very first thing that I need to develop in my class for them to really feel comfortable and to settle down um, and, and be prepared for, for us to start is for them to build good relationship with each other. Because there was even a time when I said like, okay, guys, I'm so tired of the rapport building activity. Can we just stop doing that? And then most of them were like, say, no, Miss Tori, it's like our our key of like starting the class. So it's it's already something that they, they like doing. So yeah, it could okay. be for others they can use it like that, but it it, it it actually differs on like what your goal is in using that. So yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um because um of course I'm kind of lost. I lost I, I read someone's um comment no what i'm no i'm referring to going back to what paul was you know he was surprised that they have different classes every period but you know what what really surprised me in my first year of teaching here was that the moment the class starts no one is outside you know back in the philippines Okay, first hour, everybody's in the classroom, but then you will mm -hmm. still see kids running around, walking. Mm -hmm. But here, if it's first hour, no one is walking. Everybody's in the classroom. I was like, what? What is going on? And then during prep time or, you know, your vacant time, 
well, usually back home, you, oh, I'll go to you know someone someone else's classroom, do do this talk, something like that. But not here. I mean, you you will be busy preparing for your next mm-hmm. class and prepare prepare your room. So it's something that okay, this is different. So that that's good. And that mention about um, Machina that you know the when you flip that you told them that okay we're not going to do this anymore because i want something new so that's because of they practice it every day that's what they call routine so when you do that Mm -hmm. and if for example you're absent and then there's someone who's going to cover your class and for some of course the sub teacher will you know he will not know sometimes what he's going to do so your kids if you train them and if you have routines in your routines in your classroom they will be the one actually to tell the sub okay let's do no machina said no uh miss story said this blah 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 so they will they will be the one actually to give instruction to the sub teacher yeah so right. that's right and uh so something that uh, that we can that's why on your first year take note take note what are your loopholes what do you don't want to do mm-hmm. when you're this you don't want to happen again and um i remember there's one teacher before um in my in my school as well i think yeah in my school on the first day um first day of school he let all the uh kids inside the classroom get in line. i mean still in one line inside the classroom hmm. and then he who are you going to respect in my classroom? And then this kid were like, you. Okay, sit down. Next student. Who are you going to respect in this classroom? <laughs> you. Okay, then you can sit. Well, that's his, that's his first day, you know, how to welcome the kids. And then he mm-hmm. gained all the respect of the student. You know, with, with, you know, the, the eyes and everything. Who are you going to respect in my classroom? Well, that takes a lot of energy, but it is effective. <laughs> yeah, that, that that would work, but then yeah, that sometimes it will not work as well to some other people. Yeah, so we have as Esther, Aryan, and Dida. So they just want to say hi and thank you to you guys and um Cherry, teachers from the Philippines. So good luck if you're planning to teach here in the US. And she said God bless us all. And MJ, Machina, what did she say? Um, language can be a struggle also. Students seem to speak so fast. Sometimes I can't catch up. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, I would say especially that they we, we must admit it, we're we're not native speakers, right? Though I would say, and you had an experience with like being exposed to native speakers with like the kind of job we had back home. But there is still some like phrases, some it's not just how fast they talk. It's 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 also like uh, the kind of words that they use. We're like, Mm -hmm. I would say back home, I would I would say that I am so confident that I know the language, you know, right. (laughs) But it is it is natural. I mean, like it takes time. You'll just have to be very keen, though, on like observing what are those ways, like the ways they speak um it is it is it's struggling i would tell you we we i i don't know if Anne had that but last year when i was starting um working in here there are times that i would say like what does that kid mean right and it's just i think one thing that perhaps we just need to instill in our mind is that there's no harm in like making sure that they that you understand them or mm-hmm. you, you just have to clarify things, right? So mm-hmm. um, even sometimes pronunciation, the kids will just correct you the wrong pronunciation. Yes. And there was even one time that I mispronounced the word because I'm used to like the British way of pronouncing words, right? And they would say like, we story this not the way of like how you say that. And then one kid sa- said that, Miss Tori, you're an English teacher. You should know how to say that. Then another kid said, being an English teacher doesn't mean that you have to know everything, which is they, they know, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not bad sometimes to just admit that we're having struggles and we'll just have to to be honest to ourselves and 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 just uh, do it in a way that we are like 
humble enough to admit that there's something that we need to to learn and we need to do better at and that that's one thing which is like comprehending mm -hmm. them right and i think listening and it listening is a skill the yeah. more that you get to use to the way they talk even how fast it is you'll get used to it in in a number of years that mm -hmm. you're going to be working here so Have i hope it makes sense pays to it it also pays to let them know that hey i am from the philippines and, and the way you say things are kind of different from the way we say things so can you can you please clarify what you're saying it does it hurt it doesn't it won't hurt your ego if you do say it again can you please rephrase that like that what do you mean i'm sorry i, I may yeah. have mm -hmm. put it differently right mm -hmm. so have you experienced that fall on your first week yes i did so sometimes i would just not pay attention to whatever they're saying. like you know um I'm arguing with another kid and so i think i would just interrupt it and have this conversation inside the classroom let's go back to our lesson yeah. so that's the way i don't mind whatever they're saying because i'm pretty sure that those were not nonsense things so okay let's, let's get over it let's go back to our lesson um another thing i think for miss mj um i hope what you're teaching is not english <laughs> because you have an excuse right <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. But if you teach English, yeah, it's it's a struggle. That sometimes you have to t tell yourself that I need to, I need to be good at this because this is what I'm teaching. But again, it's not a problem if we admit that there's something that we need to work on, that mm -hmm. we need to improve on. We're not native speakers in the first place. And, and after all, we are so one of J1 things. culture exchange teachers, and they should, we should know also that we need to share our culture and that they should know that we are coming that we need them to understand that we don't understand their language that much and also one of the reasons why is it sometimes we have a hard time to understand what they're talking is because the english that we learn is by the book we learn the proper english but then these are natives. These are the people that were here for such a long time and they're using their, you know, like we call it not really street language, but that is the language that they were taught to. So it's not actually by the book. So this, like, you know, in the Philippines, we have those words as well that sometimes people will not understand it because we're making up we're making words that you and your group will just understand so they love those words so just for example the word submit right so when you're going when you submit your work we say it in the philippines okay submit your work how are they how did they do it here they turn in your work so yeah because like we learn the proper english that's how the english but then for them it's just like their street language so that's why in my first year because i'm dealing with a middle school teacher i mean middle school um i even read the urban dictionary because um they may say some words you know inappropriate words that i don't know and then uh, after i read the urban dictionary some kind of like uh, relate to them so sometimes just to be knowledgeable of what they're de uh, what they're talking about too because you know be uh, talking something else but then that's why it's your classroom should be bully free so you should know those things those urban words that they're telling uh, that they're talking in the classroom and yes there's nothing wrong to admit that you don't know how to pronounce a word so usually in my class I will say yeah, thank you. Thank you for telling me how does that work. And um, since they know I'm from the Philippines, so sometimes, I mean, my kids will really tell me, oh, that you pronounce the word. And then I will, because at the because I will tell them, I may mispronounce some of the words, but, you know, I'm very few are going to correct me, but in a nice way, you know, but then sometimes we make fun of it as well. Just like the word ibuprofen. In the Philippines, we say it ibuprofen. Here, 
takes ibuprofen, something like that. So about the stress, uh, you know, the stress of the words and everything. So that's just like that. And um, Miss MJ said, yes, bell work is just some... Oh, did I just... Yeah, bell work is allowed. Bell work, Teachers yeah. should check at the end. It is. It is. That's right. Yeah, but we we normal we use. I mean, we really do that because uh, mm -hmm. if you want to check attendance, so you want them to be mm -hmm. busy because um, you know you don't want the someone's going. I, I always tell my students, I have, I hate eye pollution, and what what is eye pollution? Eye pollution for me, it's like all of you or someone is running around going back and forth. I don't like that. So they, they know it's eye pollution for me. Yes. So Ms. Zina said, try, try to occupy or occupy your students. Don't give them hold between course. I agree because the moment they will see the moment they will see that, Hey, this class is kind of lax. Um, I don't, the mm -hmm. teacher is kind like not prepared so okay maybe i'm gonna do this i'm gonna disrupt the class so make them busy make mm -hmm. them um, yeah. do really a lot of things but then things that you know will keep them busy and stay seated watching from miss saigon or watching from saigon sorry miss saigon <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I did. Okay, <laughs> all right. So yes, Paul, your turn. So about your life, you'll gain the respect. It's my Zena. experience. Yeah, that, that's from Zena. Well, as for me, well, I haven't shared much about my life. I'm basically, just about me, where I'm, and uh, what grade did I teach in the Philippines? That's all I, all the things that I shared, and some of my family. That's that's all I shared in the first day of my class because I'm also their life on a sheet of paper. Well, we're, they're not sharing it in front of the class, though. It's my way of making them know that I'm sharing my something turn to share your life uh, to me, too. But they're a worksheet, a way of uh, getting to know them more and to also to group them according to and um well yeah so basically yeah i agree don't let the students know a lot because yeah it, it will it, it pays to be this one um a little mysterious to them and I, and I, I totally agree with that too but not until the kids ask you like those questions but mm -hmm. of course you have to look at you know like personal things yeah. You have to put good the patients. Yeah, it's it good that you actually share like a piece of you to them. Mm -hmm. um, that means they're interested. It means that they're comfortable like talking to you. That's the, the good thing there. But of course, we have to like like weigh things and what are the things that we need mm -hmm. to share with them? What are those that we need to like hold? Right. So you might be surprised that the kids here where I am teaching, they don't know that I'm even married. <laughs> they were, yeah, they don't know that. And then I was actually surprised. And I was like, this is how I am being, you know, sneaky to those kids. Sometimes they, it's a, uh, what you call this? There's one kid last, last year and she was like, so when you had your date, Miss Cuevas, I was like, what, where is this question coming from? They don't know that. They did not really know that. I mean, I sometimes you will let that let those kids feel as well that you're human beings as well sometimes they think that teachers are not human beings so if they want to ask you know if they're asking questions share a little but not everything um yeah i to be honest i don't want them to see me doing my grocery shopping and everything because one time there's one kid she saw me. I was at Walmart. Oh, I saw you at Walmart. It's like you have you're buying those things. Blah blah blah. Oh my god, what's going on? So yeah, awesome. so just a little piece of you, not everything. So so that keep your life private as well, because that will make them like think that this person doing this, like you're miss like mystery to them, but still get their respect and uh, let them. In Engage and okay, class. Let's not talk about that. It's not. It's my personal 
emotional thing already. And it's the kids who will, you know, you're in front of them. So they like to see their teacher if you have your new, you know, they, oh, you have your new shoes. Oh, you have your new bag, something like that. You and always have new shoes, teacher Anne. <laughs> I during during the parent teachers night last so Thursday just wearing like my rugged slipper because my principal said go go comfortable and you know come comfortable in, in classroom because we're wearing our classroom and I forgot it's parents night for my seventh grade and I'm just wearing you know my principal said wear comfortable so i was wearing comfortable my shirt mm -hmm. and my pants and my rugged mm -hmm. slipper and then i don't have time to go home and one of my my previous students said you you don't you're not matching today i was like oh yeah yeah you noticed that it's okay so they notice those little things and that's how you can you know build relationship as well too oh yeah you know they love to talk about shoes and uh mm -hmm. You know, American, I mean, so, yeah, you should be prepared for that as well. And uh, Miss MJ, I think, Synergy. I think all the three of us are using Synergy, right? Are you using Synergy, Machina? Yeah. Okay. So, Paul, what can you say about Synergy? Tell them about Synergy. You know, those teachers, we have 1,000 viewers right now. Mm -hmm. They want to hear what is Synergy. <laughs> really? 1,000 viewers? Um, well, well, Synergy is like, what do you call that? An application that, that, um, that the districts, the school districts are using to track the attendance. Um, don't don't um, mark, uh, if you don't hit or finish uh, checking the attendance, first 10 minutes, of the class, I don't know if it's if it's the same with your school. If you don't check the attendance to the system in the first ten minutes, the front front office secretary will call you you up. For Palermo, you have not, not turned in attendance yet for, for this period, like that. The new, so it was like I was I always got the call for like, like after on like I was busy, you know, preparing things and. The jumping in, I forgot to check the attendance, and so yeah, it is a, is a really an efficient way of checking the attendance and checking if it didn't has like a valid absence. You know, if you're already in third period and fourth period, mark that the student is has an allowed absence, or it's still if it's an allowed absence. It would be, it would show on your or and that the student or class it is an allowed absent because the the parent called in already and the student is marked as in your class. You know, the synergy aside from lesson plan is like the Bible of the teacher here in the US for those who are using synergy, it's like everything to us because that's where we store our groups. That's Mm -hmm. You can actually send a okay. mass email to all the parents using it. So you just need to click the particular class where you want to email. Like um, myself, every week I'm in with the parents. You know, the par this mm -hmm. parent has the access of the synergy. They call it on their end parent view. Yeah. So okay. anytime they want, they can check the grade of their of their kid and if you are going to email them it's going through synergy as well like every week i'm checking in with the parents like hey or for example it will if it's my first week uh so maybe i'm gonna i'm gonna email the hey i'm mrs gravis i am the ela teacher of your student just check this is what are we going to do for the rest of the school year so i can send mass email to all to all of the parents and then every week uh, every like Friday and you know Friday five o'clock and go oh grades are updated blah 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 so all parents will be notified about that but I am not really diligent of that but I am really trying to email and for them to be updated of what's going on in the classroom you can also um, file a um, behavioral report an incident report rather in the synergy 
So it's like everything that you need, it's in the, it's in your synergy. You don't need to have your, what do you have that in the Philippines where you write your grades? I mean, you put your grades. Class record. Why? Class record. Class record. Yeah, the class, yeah. So you do, you do that on paper, but here everything is electronic. Encode the grade just in case you will miss your your computer you can stay mm -hmm. so you can still log in to any computer mm -hmm. just you, just as long as you have your own synergy is and, a good yeah yeah and let me correct myself i thought we were referring to the word itself synergy <laughs> it's like we're talking about the tool but we don't use synergy we don't use synergy. oh you're we're using power school we're using power school and schoology oh, yeah power school is a, yeah yeah we had we had powers for, uh, on my first year, but after that we transitioned to synergy. Yeah, I remember we talked about that. Yeah, so you're using Power School. Power School is user friendly as to compare to the synergy out of tabs. But the reason yeah. for it is because you can do a lot of things as well with the synergy. Until now, I'm using synergy for three years, but there are still tabs that I do not know. What is this for? Mm -hmm. How are you going? to do this so it's like explore all the tabs and i believe i mentioned that this is your friend wait which claire? one oh yeah it's claire hi claire so claire is also an ela teacher from the philippines and she was with actually the same district um for the last school year and she's now there in arizona she had like a better um she grabbed a better opportunity there so hi claire thank you for joining us Okay, and I think she's responding to our conversation earlier. Yeah, MJ said she's a social studies major. Okay, so and also adding up to synergy. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, you can also sync your Google Classroom just in your, your Google Classroom and have it sync to synergies. So you can do it through your synergy. You can input grades through synergy, or you can have it in Google Classroom. You have it and turn their work in through Google Classroom. So it's it's yes. like a, a con the student's work. You yeah, yeah, you can sync your synergy to your Google Classroom. Um, I did that last year. Like right away when I sync students, I mean my synergy to Google Classroom, right away all my students in that particular Google Classroom, that particular period, they're all, all there. So you don't need to send an interview your student. Mm -hmm. But later on, I realized since I connected uh, Synergy to the Google Classroom, I said, one time we had a department meeting and I said, why is it my Synergy is taking so long? It's loading forever and everything. So, um, do you have the same problem with Synergy? And they said, no. And I realized maybe that's because I sent my Synergy to Google Classroom. So it's like loader. So that's why oh, I did Oh, everything. that's the reason. I mean, yeah. That's what they, I mean, that's my first time to use Synergy, I mean, to Synergy to sync in my Google Classroom, and then that's the problem. So I said, okay, I'm, I remove, and yeah, I did not have the same problem at all. So that's why. I think, which is why, and we do have two tools here for, like, the records of the kids when it comes to, like, their attendance and their grades, we use PowerSchool. But if they're if for the tools of like your classroom like materials and all of those that the kids need to turn in, we use Schoology. So we use two tools for that. Um, because but you can actually sync. It's just the grades actually from Schoology to Power School that we can sync. Um, but sometimes it's not really needed. So we have like two different tools for like just the grades and all of those data for the kids and for the materials that they need to like turn in they need to study we just post there in in on schoology it's yeah different schoology, things. yeah it's i think most of the district here in arizona they're using schoology as well they're we're using schoology as well but kids do have to have access of their lessons especially with mm -hmm. the eureka math so they have that in mm -hmm. schoology so yeah mm -hmm. and uh miss lerma is asking oh, well i about um sorry yeah uh regarding the curriculum the tool too that we are using i don't know uh well if you're talking about school g we're talking um using mcgraw hill study sync for 
for our ELA curriculum students work as per um, their grades when it comes to really are being put in and recorded and, and we can also sync that according to them according to think that to through synergy uh, but i don't know i haven't tried yet you, st yeah. we still ha you still have a lot of things to learn <laughs> right yeah, yeah there are a lot of curriculum that they're using here in the u.s and like in the philippines that we're in the department of education we have the same curriculum we're using the same grading system but that's not applicable here in the u.s so even though we're in the same state it's up to the district what kind of curriculum that they're going to use there are a lot of free curriculums there are curriculums as well that they're that they're paying for it and so, because mm -hmm. of course they are, but then those curriculum, they base it to the state standards because we have state testing at the end of the school year. So it really depends to the district. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, Irma, I think, yeah, we had the, uh, the routine on the first day already. And like I said, when uh, I mentioned my, I mean, if you're going to discuss the whole routine, it, you will not have it for a day because there are a lot of routines, routines for the whole group, routines and how are you going to pass the folder, routines and how to sharpen the pencil, you know, bathroom and stuff like that. But what I'm doing uh, from in my in on the board, I just had uh, enter the room silently, get the materials needed. Um, take the best route to your seat, um, do the bell work, and uh, do your work silently or be quiet. So those are just my important um, routines as well in the classroom. And then after they're going to do the bell with that, they know where to put it. So your class is already a start, or I mean started. That's your cue for them that you're, you're, you're going to start your lesson already. Opportunity for licensed social studies major, I believe MJ social studies major. I mean, social. Right? Yes, I, my friend is coming over in a few months, and she's a social social studies teacher. Um, she will be starting to teach at the same school where I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. So she's a social studies teacher. Yeah. Wow, wonderful. So yeah, if of, of course if you know, they don't have teacher and you can teach social here why not because like we said that curriculum we can manage that you know Filipino teachers we can manage that what we just want to practice or to be to be successful with is the classroom management but right. then your management you should start it within the week or two weeks that's why for me that you know 21 days to make it perfect so on the first day, if they don't know how to get inside in my classroom, I will, okay, all of you guys get out, let's do it again and then practice. And then until they will, until they will um, perfect how to get inside your classroom. Because mm -hmm. the moment you let them get inside your classroom and they're running around, they're doing, so they will just enter in your classroom every day like that. So routines, practice it every day, every day. And then they will memorize it or perfect it after 21 days. If you are consistent, that's the key. Be a consistent teacher. Okay. Um, Sheena, can, do you want to read this? From okay. Sure. From Ruby, Ruby Jean. Mm -hmm. um, so cool. I'm under five feet and I look like a student. We'll be handling eighth grade ELA in Phoenix. Um, have a lot to learn. Glad you have this little chat about preparations. Gracias. Yeah, our pleasure, our pleasure. Thank you so much. And I would say we experienced, I experienced it myself, that like kids will just stand up in front of the class and uh -huh. say, hey, hey Miss Tori, who's taller, you or I? So it's it's normal. It's normal. The kids I feel that. that. They, that's, that's, their, that's their way, actually, of... Um, what do you, what's it term? That's their way of... If they like you, for they will do that for example my eighth graders i mean i'm teaching seventh grade the following year they're tall basketball mm -hmm. player and then they will say if you're outside lining up hey miss gravis look at you now you're too short i i had i increased like five inches and then um, what i normally say is you know what where i came from my height is just normal so you know 
stuff. <laughs> but then, you know, they, they love that. They love to goof off if they're comfortable with mm. you, if they trust you. They will not do that if, if they don't like you at all. But the kids, the, the kids are loving. You just know how to deal with them. But then, yeah, mm-hmm. you will really have problems. But then, like what my principal said last professional development that we had, always start like every day a fresh day. Forget what happened mm-hmm. yesterday. Yes. Because for the kid, they're just kids. And that's why I said, Paul, last time, like, after, at the end of the day, you will, he they will just say, bye, Ms. Cuevas, see you tomorrow. And like, didn't we just had a bad day today? Mm-hmm. Like something like, but for them, they, they, they don't treat it like that. So start the day fresh. Like, don't do that, that they're in, just in the, by the door and. Hey, you know what? Maybe you're go- like you know you had you had pro- you had an encounter with that kid yesterday, and then you're it's still you're still thinking about that, and they're still in, by the door, and then you better be good today, or else I'm going to send you at the office. So he, that kid did not do anything yet. She's just about to enter your classroom, and you just said that already. So you already started her day bad because mm-hmm. those kids. Guys, you you don't have any idea what are they dealing with back home. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, in their, their house, it could Isn't be alive. Kids, yeah, they could have a they could have a bad day. It could be their parents are were not able to go mm-hmm. home because of overtime. They or maybe they were not able to eat dinner, or maybe they were not able to sleep because mom and dad just had a fight, something like mm-hmm. that. So be considerable as well, which is my you know my. Um, my problem as well on my first year. No one told me that, that, you know, in the Philippines right after you don't know how to respect me, we do that in the Philippines, but not here because social emotional, we call that social emotional here in the US. So be considerate, start every day fresh. Forget what happened yesterday. Uh-huh. Although it's, it's easier it's- said than done to it's understand hard. the students, you know. Anything I think we also talked about it last um, like live stream we had, and right that as teachers, being this part of the world, um, we need to understand what the kids are going through, right? Yeah. Um, this, this is this is where our being compassion, compassionate, right? Like we need to make sure that we bring a lot of patience with us, and 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 understanding, right? Um, because we know we know what kind of family the Filipino kids have back home, but in here it's something that we need to learn, right? Mm-hmm. It's critical for us to understand what the kids are going through and making them feel again, if I want to mm-hmm. reiterate it, um, making the kids feel that you're there, listen mm-hmm. like listen to them and making them feel that hey, my teacher um, would actually, are, is is very willing to 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 listen to me, and that is the most fulfilling thing that you can actually experience while you're here, and and I experienced that last semester or last year, which is which is really great, right? Like if the kids um, feel so comfortable like sharing with you what they're were struggling with, and they're like finding it that you are somebody that they can trust, so it's 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 really good, right? Mm-hmm. Just just show them and understand them. Um, but not to the extent, of course, that what Anne said, like you yeah. have to make sure that you have the authority in the class, right? You have, uh-huh. They know who you are. So, yep. Yeah, that's where the building relationship um, will enter. And uh, that's the most, that's the most, or what you call that, that's, that is our weapon actually here in the U.S. The lesson, exactly. like we said, it will just go through if you have the the trust and the respect of the kid that will just go through your lesson and everything but then if you do not know how to manage them even though how you try to feed them your lesson it's so how can you see to your lesson this first stop you don't even know how to be quiet so you first stop you don't know how to stop them from being disruptive so the mm-hmm. although for us we're thinking oh i should do this my lesson i should be behind if i'm not going to do this Mm -hmm. because they're testing but 
Yeah, there is a testing, but what's the most important thing? How are you going to present that lesson if there's no disruption? So mm -hmm. that's that's one thing that we need to have relationship to the kid and let them feel that they have someone to talk to in the in the campus. It may not be you; it could be a different teacher. But then at least you, that kid knows that you are willing to listen as well. So get that relationship to that kid. I know it's hard. Just saying it, thinking of it, it's so hard for me. I, I always had battles with, the, you know, I, I'm always thinking about this. Oh, my goodness, you know, how could I be like this? How could I be not sarcastic to the kid? Because they, those kids, if they talk back, they really have a good comeback to you. That mm -hmm. sometimes you don't know how to fight back. That's yes. their language. How are you going to say that to your kid? I remember, like, you know, what do you call that? In, uh, what do you call that in Tagalog? Like, um, kahit ang aso hindi makaka, hindi ka, par, par, kahit, uh, hindi ako marunong tila. Kahit aso hindi ka kahit. Kahit yung aso hindi. Ano nga yun? <laughs> Okay, I don't have any. Oh, you guys are talking about yung, yung behavior mo. Parang ganun. Ah. <laughs> Kain ng aso para hindi ma- Ay, ayaw, ah. no. What do you call that in Tagalog? Yung behavior mo, yung attitude or whatever. Even, you know, even... And then, how, kahit ang aso, kahit ang aso, hindi ka kainin yung... yung Parang bad behavior. Ano yan? Hindi, maru, hindi tayo marunong. Well, there's no direct translation for that because we were saying we are saying that phrase it's in our yeah there i guess that there's no phrase like that in tagalog but when you say that yeah in our language something like that how do you say that in their language? Just say it in the Macau ng Batasan or somebody who uh, Somebody said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's why. <laughs> On so, Facebook. So they had a great comeback. They're sarcastic and everything. How are you going they to are. stop that? <laughs> yeah, they are. And sometimes, it, sometimes you just shut up and uh, don't argue with the kids. Because the thought in your mind, you can say it in English and... and Okay, yes, I'm not going to yes. argue with this and then proceed with the lesson. I mean, and I think with what Anne was saying, like you, sometimes it's good that you are aiming to like cover or finish the, the lesson that you need to finish in a day. But there are just times that you need to set it aside because what for that you're talking there, nobody's listening to you, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. it's still useless. It's still useless. Yeah, because these kids, they want they want to have fun in your classroom mm -hmm. as well. They, so, they want you know, attention. Yes, they, because they don't get enough attention at home. Yeah, everybody, so like, everybody <laughs> wants attention. We want attention. Yes. Don't we? <laughs> right? Yes. And there's just a comment from Anna, how we wish in the Philippines would be like that. Hi, kahit may computerized na iparite, iparite app or something like that uh -huh. well yeah we experienced that too so uh, that's why we're here <laughs> i mean <laughs> i mean i i i i was with that for two years only so i said uh, i'm not good i'm uh -huh. not going to be effective so that's why so i also see i have those paperwork yeah and she said wish to all that tools are efficient so it's a one kahit computerized if right so and she is asking if synergy is uh, possible in the Philippines. I'm not quite sure about that. It depends. The our if our department, um, what you call this one, when, uh, in that kind kind of system, then it is possible if they choose to. If they decide to invest in that. They're not really into it, it and want. But I'm yeah, and they want to I'm, saddle the teachers with a lot. Well, depends. Yeah, I, I was trying to chime in because I would say that Power School is actually available in the Philippines. Oh, yeah. really? I don't know if it's the Power. It's I think it's the Power School because I mentioned it like in the call center where I used to work for. We mm -hmm. are the customer mm -hmm. service, and we we found that there's a school in Cebu that purchased the the Navians, the mm -hmm. Power School. It's it's part of it. So. 
Well, maybe yeah, they're saying for the VPN. That's why yeah, it's, it's, for that. it's not it's a so free long. app. It's not a free yeah. app. So that's why um, they have to pay for that. And I'm not sure if the patient can afford that, but maybe who knows? Uh, because that's actually a good tool. And But yeah, it, it, it has a price in it. Because sometimes we have been mm-hmm. emailed that there's um, an update or they're doing something with the synergies that don't open. So yeah, they should they should purchase it for sure. And since it has call center, it has they have mm-hmm. problems to deal with. So for sure, they're they're paying for it, right? Or they're going to buy from that. So hopefully, you know, Department of for sure, they will find for that. It's just that here in the U.S., maybe they're thinking of the convenience of the teachers because they know mm. already what kind of situation we are dealing with in the classroom. So that's why, okay, let's make this teacher's life easier. Let's do this. Let's do that. So, right? Okay. So, Paul, maybe this is applicable to you, the question of John. Well, he's asking, is it true that upon reporting to the school that is the time track- real one with corrected salary based on your experience well ba- as for my experience i did not another con- contract because way back in the philippines i already signed one i signed it through and um the, the salary is still the same and uh, the, the school district did not ask me here in, in the united states as i checked in the district so no that's for me though i don't know with your experience I, I cannot talk for others for me here in our district. Um, I did not sign any more a, a, a new contract or another contract. The, the, the contract I signed way back in the Philippines was the only contract I signed with my salary change. The, the salary, I, I mean, it did not Yeah, I think not uh, with this question, um, if you didn't, I mean, if you did not give the district your whole credentials if you're still in the philippines then it could be changed right but if you're here if you're there in the philippines already and you already told them that you have you have your bachelor's you have your master's you have your phd and everything so they will assess it already from here and then that's the sign that's the contract that they're going to give to you however let's say um, you because there are, I believe there are districts that they don't accept the the paper, the transcript of records that it's not evaluated. So some they are doing only the bachelors. They're going to send only the bachelors, and and then so that's that they gave to you is only for your bachelor. But then maybe mm-hmm. you don't have your masters. You were not able to evaluate. I mean, have it evaluated, and you say, okay, maybe I'll just present this when I come back. I mean, when I arrive in the, at the district office. So they might, of course, they will add your salary for that. There are schools though that it's okay if your masters. Is- are not evaluated. I might when I came here, I don't have my master's evaluated yet. I was the mm-hmm. one who did that. But like I said, if you have all the credentials already from the Philippines, you gave it to them when you came here, there's no changes. So it's yeah, still the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or maybe they if change. they want to sign you the like the real contract, they would do that when I came here. I signed again another contract. It's like the real the paper copy already because when they when I did the contract, it's a signed, you know, a scanned copy. When I arrive here, they still ask me to sign my contract, but it's just the same. How about you, Machina? Um, it's exactly the same. I was given like a, with a job. There's no contract. It's just a job order that gives you like the uh, animal salary. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's the same with Paul. It didn't change when I got here. That's a time that I um, let it, I had the confirmation and have all of those signed. But and on, in my case, I think I, what I can recall is I sign it digitally. Um, yeah. in, the, in the system of, of the school district. But one thing, one thing that I would want to share, I don't know if it happens, it's applicable to, to some other school district, is that you have, I was shocked, actually, this is what happened to me because I got here 30 days late. And so those 30 days was like deducted to the annual pay. 
<laughs> supposedly it was prorated, but it's it's actually reasonable because of course you didn't work for that. So I was expecting like that amount will be like divided into the number of, of months, but or pay they actually days. Deducted, they deducted the number of days from the annual pay. So it's something a little more complicated, which is why if I, I know there are times that getting a visa approved is, is beyond our control. But if you come here before the school year starts, um, whatever you miss will be deducted from your annual um, salary. Yes. Right? Yeah, it's you, yeah. It's you, you got here before the yeah. school year starts. Yeah. That's why, remember, three of us were working at the call center. So there's like pro rated stuff like that so yeah. it's kind of like american thing so that's why and or it could be that uh they will change your salary for example when they gave you when they give you the contract back in the philippines it could be after that let's say they gave you the contract month of mm -hmm. march or april and then you came September or so by those in between months there's a salary increase approved by the district for the month mm -hmm. of too. So are included already if there's a salary increase. So that's why mm -hmm. they're going to change your, that your your salary as well because you, usually the district do that. So for example, we have this contract already for the month of May, and suddenly there's an, a, an annual increase in between months. Mm -hmm. So we're going to sign another contract, something like that. So, but it's not really it's not really happening all the time. Yeah, and what do you just have to bear in mind if they're going to let you sign a contract? It's mostly for an increase and nothing negative. <laughs> yeah, right? that's right. That's right. Um, talking about contract, I mean, there's some complications sometimes as well that I'm not sure, but this is really a applicable to us. Um, there are jurors that, you know, like I said, don't have the job yet. Keep on um, accepting interviews. Because uh, until mm -hmm. you have your job offer. But teachers, I just would like to remind you as well, if you keep on accepting job, accepting interviews and you already signed the contract or a job offer and you think other school hired you as well, but the pay is on what you previously signed, please, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you want to go that way to go to the higher district that has a higher rate, let that particular district that you signed the contract first let them know that you know you are not going mm -hmm. with them because there is a consequence for that it could be a breach of contract or i'm not yes. sure though but just yeah just making sure that you know what are you dealing with too yeah so cherry has a question or uh, no oh yeah um, she, she said, she, uh, I hope I could easily adopt their behavior in the U S I have been 20 years teaching here in the Philippines. You will adopt the behavior if you're dealing with them every day. It may mm -hmm. take you, it may, it may take you three take to six months. Quite some time. Yeah. <laughs> like Paul is getting the hang of it for a week and, you know, take note of <laughs> and those so I, I'm still girl deal with these, th these behaviors of kids. Kids, you know, they're they're great. I suppose to say the word, but yeah, yeah, they're like confused kid. You really have to bear with that, and the yeah. culture is really, really different. It's a total, total opposite of what. It doesn't matter if you're like five years, ten years, twenty years experience in the Philippines, because all of those count if you're here in the United States, because the culture is totally polar opposite. I mean, yeah, and in, 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 sorry, Anne. Yeah, and no, in connection okay. to that, yeah, um, like there is a like it is an advantage that you have twenty years of experience, right? Because it's there, there you have been for out for sure. You have been like using really good classroom mm -hmm. management there. Um, but sad to say, though, that when you're here in the U.S., there are things that you have to unlearn. Okay, mm -hmm. you have to be very particular in observing what are those practices in the Philippines that is not good to use here. Um, it's not all the time that you've been there and you're like a veteran teacher that all of those are, of course, applicable here. Um, just be just be aware that there are some like ways or some practices 
that you have to unlearn for you to be effective and for you to be successful in here. So be observant, know what is just best for, because as what Paul said, kids here are way much different than kids in Asia and in the Philippines in mm -hmm. particular. So yeah, um, never compare. You would say, oh, the kids back home are like this. This is what I, what I did back in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So yeah, bear that in mind. Not maybe you find it the best practice back home, uh -huh. but it could be something that is not good in in the U.S. Because Anne would would agree, as I always say, um, we are like the gods and the goddesses of the classroom back in the Philippines, right? When when kids hear, oh, Miss Torres is, is is coming, oh, Miss Cuevas is here, and they will just be silent. And very few that you can count on your fingers that would be rowdy. But in here, it's different. So that's what we need to take. You need to take note of. Yeah. And one thing, why are they acting like that? Or why are they behaving like that? Because I may say most of them, they don't value education like the way how we value in the, in the Philippines. Right. Because in the Philippines, education is our passport to go other places but for them they are not i mean they're they have everything like for them for he, he, he here if your parents are not working you can still eat what are those you know well-off family are eating why because they have food bank they have free food so they are being supported by their government and like in the philippines if you don't have education then you're poor poor what's going what's going to happen no one will help you right but he has everything that's why they don't care they don't care about education the only reason why they go to school it's because it's against the law that their parents will not let them say i mean will not let them go mm -hmm. at, at school why because mm -hmm. they have school they have free lunch they have free breakfast free you know free everything is mm -hmm. free and there's no reason for those parents that they are not going to send their kids because everything is free provided provided for them because of the tax everybody is paying the tax so mm -hmm. that's why the kids they consider the, the their classroom as a jail or school as being they are in prison mm -hmm. so because I, I i remember one of my students two years ago she said she was she was hospitalized she was sick she was not able to go to school for 30 days and uh her parents were actually receiving uh her parents received a notice mm. that her parents need to to you know uh explain herself in the court why is it mm. this kid not able to go to school and considering she has a medical condition or maybe there's just a problem mm -hmm. that they were not to report right away so but then well the, the court considered it because of course she is sick and something like that so that's why even though those kids don't want to go to school they still go to school or else their parents will go to jail so that's why uh so but then like you said in the philippines if you don't go to school what will happen to you you will end up whatever you are doing so that's why that's why yeah. <laughs> they don't like school they still go to school and another thing, and actually, is that they're so confident that even if they do not go to college, there's just like a ton of working yeah. opportunities in here, right? Mm -hmm. Literally, it is a land of opportunities, and wherever you go, there are just mm -hmm. job postings. So even if they don't have good grades, they can they can go at Target, mm -hmm. Walmart, and get a yeah. job, right? That's, That's without the dream degree. job. That's a dream job to be the man to work at McDonald's, to work at Burger King. Ask them what, what, how do you see yourself ten years from now? I'm a manager exactly. at Burger King. Yeah, so you will not be surprised of those uh, reasons. So the question, I think, uh, Paul, you want to answer this? Um, I'm chair in one class because here in the Philippines, it is more than thirty students in one class well it depends if your district has a small population of kids well the class our district here unfortunately the biggest class 36 imagine that 36 confused oh. 
actual so I'm full of energy kids in one that's classroom. A lot. That's a lot. That actually, that's a lot. And th- these middle, middle um, graders, the final number, because our principal told us last week that we were still waiting for 300 months if, for the school year. So it's like, what's going to happen in our life we're like have we're like already in 36 um class uh class size already so difficult to handle so but with other districts i believe 15 to 20 yes ours is 15 to 25 um our school principal would already be alarmed if we handle more than 25 kids which is why we hired more teachers um this school year because our principal really wouldn't want us to like handle more than 25 kids. The most that I had last year was only 23. And also the reason why you said like in your district, Paul, why you are dealing with 33 students, that's because of teachers shortage. Yes. Uh, mm. After a pandemic, the, the size of the classroom is like that already. But when it came Year 2018, the most students that I had was 25 in one classroom, and uh, mm-hmm. that's that's manageable. I the the least that I uh, the least was 15 15 students, but then after pandemic, um, but but after pandemic I had had first week I had 30, but able to uh, make make it to 28. Yeah. Yeah, that's because after pandemic teacher shortage, so that's why we are usually middle schools. I believe it will range from fifteen to twenty-four, but for high school, for high school, sometimes they will even reach thirty-five. I know uh, one of the Maha- the high schools here in my district, they have more than uh, thirty-three, something like that. Yeah, so it, it really depends on the district. It really depends to what site are you from. So it 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 really matters. And um, I don't know what did I said, Miss Anna, but thank you. Uh, I think all of us teachers here in the U.S. were very, you know, something to be proud of maybe because we were able to deal with those kids. <laughs> so good luck to us. You don't I congratulated, I congratulated myself. I survived the first school year. I'm telling yeah, you, you right? don't want to hear the text or the message of Paul to me, you know, but you, you will know, guys. That's why I told, I, I told him, Kapit lang bes, you know, because. Right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we will, we will survive. We will survive. And, I re- but, and then on hope your so. second year, on your second year, just will go back to your experience. You will just laugh at it. And then you will not even remember the difficult, you know, the hardest feeling that you had with that student. That oh I, you know, it's, it could be that um, this school year almost you you almost cry, but then next year you will forget about it, you know. I just laugh and at it. To make Paul feel better, I want to share with you. Last year, I had a couple of breakdowns, and I had <laughs> inside attacks just to make you feel better. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> you're just starting the journey. <laughs> yeah, I, I cried. I cried, but not in front of the kids because the moment yeah. you, the kids <laughs> will see that. Like, so our classroom is adjacent to each other, so there's like four classrooms. Mm-hmm. You can just open the door and get to another mm-hmm. classroom. And then it's the end of the class. It's the end of the class where we already shoo the kids at the bus stop, and you know, it's like you're alone in your classroom. Mm-hmm. And then I went to my teacher's, you know, teacher's desk, and I cried. And then my my department chair went to my classroom, and then he was talking. Oh, I was like, then you know, I was crying, but I really, how could I cry then? You were. My department chair is already, but he knew, he knew I was crying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and then every time, every time I will remember that, he will just laugh at it. And I said, "That's the mm-hmm. most in moment that I had with you." But things really happened, and you will just mm-hmm. 
Mm. It you will just forget it after you know after you had your salary already, you had it in your bank account. Okay, I'm gonna pay this. I'm gonna pay that. I'm gonna pay this. The number the halo. <laughs> the dollar yeah. halo. Yeah, that's right. Think it at the top of their head, like uh, if you, you know. But then, like I said, oh, you know what? I love. I want you to be in my class. You're always welcome here. But at the back of my, mm, but just stop. You know, you're here because you know what this live video is yeah. like becoming a bit. Yeah, you want to be here, right? So deal with it. If <laughs> The you wanted, you wanted it so bad. Teams, like, when am I going to have my DS 2019? When am I going to get an interview? When am I going to receive an email that I was hired? When am I going to have my visa interviews? Something like that. Now you're here. Deal with it. Right? <laughs> yeah. I guess what? Here's the catch. Just remember, yeah. just remember yeah. what you through right that, so, that's right so yeah. i mean those are normal things that's why first year is always it so just mm -hmm. right now i on my third year i told my print my principal i'm not going to yeah. sign the contract i'm not going to sign it anymore <laughs> even though it's my year but they're in pandemic time and then she said mm -hmm. take a look look at your look at your i mean look at your contract but then the you know it's rewarding it's rewarding though at the end of the day you're alone and then you can contemplate what did you do wrong what did what's that's in your classroom and those kids those those kids are loving and um like like i said in my first because during that time it was 2018 it was i'm our batch is like the second batch of j1 from my agency there's only a few j1 that time and so no one really told us what to do something like this something to do that and at the last day of school it's it's a habit in our in our school that at the end of the at the last very last day of the class the the office will will play a music that's something about like it's the end of the class it's the end of the school year you know what i i really cry at the hallway and i said oh my god i survived five of us five filipino teachers in that in that school and i i really cried because oh my god how did i do this how did i survive how did i do my 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 first year of teaching in the u.s and i will not really forget those experiences so it, it but we survived we were eight high, high five and i wanted to do back dive after the first time <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and one motivation as well for the teachers especially you know if you're having a hard time i i i told this to paul i put my calendar the school calendar on um, you know on the fridge mm -hmm. so that I can oh holidays coming. Oh okay, we guess what? have a break. But I have that on my desk already. <laughs> you have That's it right. too? Yeah. That's right. Counting it's down the days you look days. forward to. Yeah, so, so it's something that you look forward that you know that's why that's why those teachers it could be your friends in Facebook you will see them traveling road trip and everything mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that they have a lot of money that just means that they want to cool off yeah it's, it's, right and it's it's it's, it's a sanity a break well, it's a well needed break mm -hmm. it's just yeah. Yeah, well, that's right. Because yeah. after that, you will face the real battle again. So it's still fresh enough. Get a lot of energy, you know, say, wow, oh, wow, the, you know. And then because after that, what you're going to say in your classroom, sit down, do your work, be quiet. So, you know, <laughs> so those are the things. That's why the teachers are, if you will see them doing and visiting places. And excuse me, I got a question to both of you. Um, with Paul being here and all of those, of course, like overwhelming things, like a lot of new things um, for, for him to like learn and all of us. Do you have like somebody helping you out, like a mentor, like helping you to be familiar with everything? One, I have um, my, well, like a support. She lets me call her coach. Those, uh, being a local teacher and being uh, long enough in the school to do 
when it comes to the curriculum and Google Classroom surgery and everything. Also, I have this house. All of us are Filipinos, and they're like my support system. Oh, I, that's good. That's they're like good. telling me that we, we experience the same. It's normal to feel that way. There would always be kids like that. And, and other teachers in our school are also saying the same thing. You're not that is feeling that way. So that's like, that gives me a relief that at least it lets me know that failing as a teacher, it's just that these kids are behaving this way. It's not your fault. Uh, my mindset that it that causes them to behave in such a way. And my principal is assuring me that, that well, I talked to my principal because, you know, I was about to break down on the second day. She was telling me that you're, you're doing good. Uh, the moment that <laughs> I come in there, you know that you're gonna lose the respect of the, of the kids. So go back there and, and regain the authority that that that's already in you. In you told me um, I will not go in there. Um, you you be the command of your and yeah. Uh, after that day, actually, it got better. But then it was still the same. So, so yeah, I'm just I'm just glad that I survived the week, though. Mm -hmm. It's really important uh, to actually, have these kind of I, I would support system. Paul, I would say, Paul, it's really good that you are surrounded by those Filipino teachers mm -hmm. um, because it's really it's really tough. And yeah, make use of that, mm -hmm. right? Like Anne is there. You can reach out mm -hmm. to me if I know I still have like a yes, lot of things yes. from. I'm really thankful, you know, for. Uh, there are nights that uh, she would check on me mm -hmm. and I would tell her everything I felt. So that's yeah. really, really good support system. Also right now that you're there. And that's uh, thank what you so we need. That's what, it, it, that's what every teacher yeah. get, mm -hmm. goes here, right? Yeah. Yeah. So for those, those who are listening or like, I, I believe it, it, it pays for you to, to have a Filipino teacher around or even a local um, American teacher in, in your school when in your school and to ask for help if if, if, if something goes wrong so just to uh, you know, to tell you that everything's all right everything's gonna be okay and iba yung ano nag nagtutoka na hindi nag English di ba yeah yeah we learned how to do it here in the US, right? And I think all of the district, they have instructional coach, you know, because of course, um, especially for the new teachers, uh, foreign teachers, they, they know that we don't know how they do the class, you know, so they have instructional coach. What is the instructional coach uh, doing? They're helping you um, maybe explain the curriculum. Maybe they uh, go over, maybe they will, I mean, most of the time they will go in your classroom, observe your class. Mm -hmm. They are not going in your classroom because they want to see negative things in your class, but they are listening or taking notes. How are you going to improve your lesson and what they are taking notes of the good things doing in the classroom and from there they're they're training i mean they're teaching you and how to do that and i believe they're providing trainings here in the u.s and that training stayed so and um, yes. you know so those are the opportunities that we have here so like but then like i said the curriculum that's just easy we can manage that i mean what did we deal in the philippines with that with that lesson that we were not able to deal it with here here maybe just just the pronunciation but the rest we can handle it it's just easy especially if that's already your major science math ela that's just i cannot say it's nothing but then maybe we need to we need to be coached for a week but after that we know what to do already and there's nothing wrong in asking questions that's why um i, I met someone um he's very his very um uh scared that most of the teachers that will be coming in their in their uh school 
master teachers in the Philippines, and principals, a, a teacher in charge, something like that. Um, but then I what I can su- what I can suggest to those teachers coming here that you know if they're your principal in the Philippines or TIC or whatever, get your crown. <laughs> put it down you know um you may be the principal or TAC or master teacher in the Philippines and then oh I'm a principal I'm not going to ask because I know how things work blah 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 no there's nothing wrong being low-key and ask questions because of course if you will not ask questions they will know I mean they will just think that you know what to do already so Keep it low, you know, and then ask questions. So be be open to air, be open to to be corrected. Suggestions. It, mm. Yeah, suggestions and it will help you. It will really help you a lot. And because of course those local teachers, they can also eyeball those teachers that are not open for suggestions. So, you know, make sure you 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 consult to them as well because there are things that may not be that they are not doing here that we are doing in the Philippines. So mm-hmm. that's why. Oh, and if I may add, because um, in here in Eagle County School District in Colorado, we, for those people who are coming from like other places, international teachers, we hire um, inter- inter- uh, international ambassadors um, for them to be helped out aside from the coach whatever the one that said coach instructional coach um so the main goal of the international ambassadors is to help all of those international teachers to cope up with the, the culture differences processing of things so it's not that mainly of the curriculum or of those things but um we're here like the international ambassadors are the ones ensuring mm-hmm. that they they are emotionally okay checking on them processing and i'm, I'm so happy that I actually was offered by the principal to be the the one doing that for the two friends that are coming over. Yeah, because it it you know how it feels, right? Like you, what do you underwent? So that's 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 um that's one thing that I would want to assure that my friends who are coming over will not experience like all of those that I've experienced last school year. So I, I don't know. Magkano ang offer dyan sa inyo? I, I will not say anything, but you know, there are 22 teachers coming here in our district. And I will I, I'm going to look for their house and place to stay. So I'm oh not my God. Oh my gosh, Anne. I mean, like that is a position that is offered to us and we're given a stipend. I mean, I did not sign up for it. It, it was just we are we are that moment. Ask if you're interested. I mean, like, I mean, okay, this time you want to do it. But, like I said, because my principal during the interview, after their teacher interview, well, oh, everybody knows you. When we ask, why do you want to be hired here? And, oh, we know Miss Griffiths. And they say, what? I mean, I only, <laughs> I only referred to one of my friends, and it's like, she said he said five people said i said okay right and then i was helping my friend to get a, a place to stay here and then it turned out that there's eight people eight filipino teachers so were hired in our school and then i mean out of just i did not offer to help them or whatever because i mean looking for a place or an apartment it's it's especially you don't have ssn yet and stuff like that but then it, it, it's a good thing that uh the uh, property management here just said yes to me because she just knew me that's and then later on the people at the district they they heard about it and then okay here you go there's 22 teachers coming maybe you can help us and i reply i'm not sure but i will try my very best you know it's, mm-hmm. it's 22 yeah. Um, um, I don't know if it's something that because our our school district here is just very open. My principal is really, really an amazing guy and he's open to like a lot of suggestions. And that could be one thing that you can do And here. They ensure like from the time the, the teachers come over, there's like people who will be like meeting them, like helping them out with the processing of everything like SSN um, going to like getting their state ID and all of those stuff. So that could be something that they can also like 
consider, right? Um, because it would, it will affect like somebody also like what I'm doing when my friends come over, I will make sure that everything, all of the things that they're going to go through will be smoothly done. That would help a lot to like the emotional uh, like condition of the new teachers who are coming yeah. over here. That's and that's right. maybe what Paul is thinking to, to have, <laughs> right? And by the way, yeah. We're definitely, currently, definitely. we currently have 23 shares right now in Facebook. So everybody's oh, watching you guys. Wow. Yeah. So much, so much <laughs> for sharing. Yes. I think this is like the most YouTube live that I had with 23 shares. <laughs> More people in the in the in the stream would be like a lot of watchers. Yeah. And well, the, yeah, Miss Anna just made a comment. I believe this isn't related to the training and the synergy still. You know, we've been too far already. So uh, she said, kahit my training coming mga guru sa Google Classroom, Microsoft, and so on, but yet the students doesn't have a gadget, useless, com useless Camila teacher may access. Yeah, that's, the, that's sometimes a problem because the teachers or the parents could not access the, the what you call that, the grades of their of their, of their child uh and you know mm -hmm. because we don't have that uh technology mm -hmm. yet but hopefully we'll work on with that and you know we find ways filipinos we always waste. and uh from miss paris uh I, I believe this is applicable for you paul since you're the uh you know you just arrived here yeah well he's asking or she i was wondering if we will papache will it give you like an advantage i mean will school districts prioritize teachers sorry i'm not sure with the school districts but with the visa sponsors definitely they will for the slots that they have for the school year if you have an agency because um agencies do uh, have allotted slots for the visa sponsor and uh, if you don't have an agency it's just like what we have here here in we were supposed to have a Filipino science teacher in in our school, but didn't have a visa sponsor yet because he applied through a DIY. He does not have a, uh, uh, an agency, so basically he's having a hard time finding. And unfortunately, his job offer was retracted by the school district, mm. the visa sponsor. So. That's an advantage if you have that push. But if you can find a visa sponsor, well, that's really so lucky of you if you can find the one. I, actually, ask. Paul, I can, I can share the difference. So I myself, uh, I, I was helped out by Bepoche. I think the three of us, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Being with the agency. We're Bepoche is, babies. Yes, and we're so thankful um, to Bepoche for helping us out. And being in an agency is actually a lot smoother. And I mean, like they're they're doing their best um, to help us out. So you don't have to worry what to do next, um, what to mm -hmm. what are the things that you need to do after this and that. Um, how you, you're right. Like if we are an agency, because they are actually affiliated with a lot of visa sponsors, so it's mm -hmm. easy for you to find a visa sponsor, which is very important in going here or coming over here. But I do have my friends, two of those friends that are coming over here um, next a few months. I they actually do it on their own. So um, it's just good though that if you want to like go here without the agency, you have somebody that can guide you to help you out. Mm -hmm. um because they can also they can also find visa sponsors by themselves but again uh with the agency it's just making your process smooth um if you want to save money then don't go to the to, to the agency mm -hmm. but if you want mm -hmm. a smoother and easier way in coming mm -hmm. over here you can go ahead and and do that with agency it's definitely hassle free right. if you'll go, go through exactly. an agency you don't need to worry yeah, um, I actually I I replied to one of the members of the uh, members of the page here because he is like into he had 
a lot of hate to those people that you know that has an agency because he said he what he went here in the U.S. with himself with the help of the supervisor, his school district, and whatever. Uh, but then, like I said, not. I mean, co- considering right now there are like 500 teachers coming. I mean, I'm not sure though, but it's like I'm overestimating 500, maybe more than that. I mean, um, it's better sometimes if you have an agency as well because consider the time difference. So, for example, Paul is a good friend of mine, my best friend. But when I told him to apply here, I told him, go with an agency. I don't have time to process your paper, to ap- apply for your teaching certificate, to have your, your your transcript of records evaluated. Because me as a teacher here, I'm busy as well. So helping you out, it's like, oh, what am I'm, I going to do? I need to do this and stuff like that. But then if you have your agency, also you have to pay them. But then you're not taking the time of other people as well because you're paying someone to do it for you. It, it is a lot of money. It's not easy. But then you want to do it the right way. And like, if you don't have an agency, oh, um, am I going, what am I going to write here? Oh, what am I going, because no one will help you. And also the advantages uh, if you have an agency is because uh, someone will help you out if you're here or your SSN mm-hmm. every day. But then Bepreche, there's really no, let's say, advantage that you have Bepreche. All oh, district, they knew Bepreche. What they knew is Visa's mm-hmm. sponsor. But mm-hmm. then there are cases, as far as I know, Bepreche, uh, especially the owner, Miss Chet, she already established a um, good relationship with other schools, especially in New Mexico. So sometimes they will, um, you know, refer. Uh, print your main application and they're the one who's uh-huh. giving it out to the schools in New Mexico because they're based in New Mexico. So there's really no like edge if you are with that machine because what they're doing is just helping you. Uh-huh. They're not really telling the principal, oh, hire this teacher, blah, 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 something uh-huh. like that. But then it's an edge for you because someone will and someone will help you. And then you heard a lot uh-huh. from that machine. They're doing good things, right? Yes, they really are. And they really are doing good. From Alano, I did inform that I am a doctorate graduate. I just declared that I am a medgrad. Will there any change in my salary? I will be receiving too. I believe she will be teaching in New Mexico because in New Mexico they have levels, uh, you know, in their teaching certificate. Um, well, if you're, I mean, if you have your doctorate degree and they're mm-hmm. going to accept it when you come here, well, yeah, of course, they most probably they they will be there will be an increase of your on your salary, but there are actually um schools that that they do not have either your teacher teaching experience they could consider your your credentials. So yeah, you can definitely do that. Miss Terry just wanted to say. Three of us to Miss Dory and, and to Sir Paul. God bless you too. And um, who, who um, Sir, thank or Miss Jam. Thank you so, so much for all the tips. I am actually uh, and hope to get hired soon. Yes, for 2022, 2023. Um, how, oh, sorry. How about the class size? I think we answered. Oh, right. yeah, we answered that already. Um, y- usually we just, I, because, hi, Ariane. Ariane is the social studies teacher I told you earlier. She's coming over in a few months. So mm-hmm. maximum is 25 yeah. for, for a classroom in, in, in the school we're going to teach, Ariane. So I'm so excited for you to be here. Mary, aside from teaching, what other opportunities we can apply for in the U.S. and what agency would you recommend? I think you cannot do other, I mean, aside from your teaching, your SSN is only intended for teaching. You could not, you cannot work aside from that. You should not get out from your program as a, as a cultural exchange teacher. So you can't teach, I mean, you can't do work because if you're going to apply for other work, then the, you are going to provide your SSN and it's not. And Miss Lerma, Miss Lerma, I think she's still referring of you know what we're talking about that 
since you you plan for it, you dream for it. So yeah, she she said that ginusto mo. So what did she say? Where is it? It's loading. Ginusto tanikag. So oh, that's what she said. Ginusto tanikag. Yeah. So ginusto. Haha. Exactly. Ginusto. So let's see. Hello, watching from Ilo. Ilo. Still gaining more info about applying. Still a dreamer here. Everybody is a dreamer. Everybody has that American dream. Yes. And let's see. Everything will just be given to in front of you once you start the first step. Mm -hmm. So don't worry. Yes. Some kids from Miss MJ, some kids would say or would ask, how's your day, Miss? And thank you for teaching. Have a great day. They're really sweet. Some though seem not to care. Yeah. That's why, like I said, at the end of the day, they will just say, have a good day after all, all the the chaos that they had. And so good luck. <laughs> and from uh, this, who is it? from Sir Franklin, can you also tell us about the, the typical teaching load, say in a week? I, I think we have different load, right? It, it depends. What do you have, Paul, right now? We can't hear you. Oh, something wrong. We can't hear you. <laughs> well, maybe while he's fixing it, I can share mine. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Here it is. Go, Paul. Can you speak up? Can you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. All right. Well, something wrong with the he headset. Okay. Um, well, I have like five teaching loads and um, I have like but including the homeroom it's counted as another one so it's six and um, still have lunch duties so that's basically it five teaching loads and one homeroom so that's total of six but on, on, in the homeroom you don't teach your subject it's just you know, some intervention and <laughs> Um, remediation time for your advisory. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Miss Sheena. So, oh yeah, you have five loads, Paul. Yeah, I think it's the same thing with Paul. Last year, last school year, I had six workloads, but um, that's one thing that Filipino teachers would have to take note. Um, I know when I was teaching back home. Like the entire like day, you would be teaching seven to eight classes or periods. Am I right? But in here, um, I just had six last last school year, and we're reducing it to five for all the teachers this school year. Which means that one hour is for your zero hour, which could be used for planning, and two periods for the planning. So which means you can go home like without anything to do at home if you are to maximize those, those three hours of you doing the planning, right? So mm -hmm. I don't know if you have that in the Philippines, but that's one thing that I really like about here. We do have planning periods. And last year I had one. This year I'll be having two plus another zero hour. Wow. Don't we have <laughs> planning period prep time in the Philippines? I we forgot. have, though. We Didn't have. I was stitching back there. We have we I had planning period, right? But yes. I'm not sure I forgot already. Paul, you you were there. We had planning period, right? Yes, we. I was like only handling five sections for yeah. the for the entire well, school year. I was teaching private school, and I had like the whole eight hours with like seven subjects. That's oh, what well, I yeah, maybe because it's private. So, but yeah, yeah. I think mm -hmm. I remember we still have planning period. Uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think so. But I think um, difference that we are doing here in the Philippines is if it's your planning period, you cannot just go and visit someone else because mm -hmm. that's like you know during your prep time, like you're all worn out, you're drained, and everything. All you just want to do is to stay in your classroom. Plus, here in Arizona, the heat, and unlike with Missouri, it's cold over there. You don't want to yes. go out under 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you know? So, and then, but the cost load for me for 
five years already. I only have, I, I always have five loads plus uh, 30 minutes uh, advisory. Mm -hmm. But right now, they are going to remove the advisory class. So we don't have advisory class anymore. So we, I have classes, but that's 60 class before we have 55 minutes. So they take 10 minutes to, it, they added 10 mm -hmm. minutes is that we remove the the advisory because some of the advisory it's like the homeroom class mm -hmm. this is the class where in your uh, relationship to your students getting mm -hmm. to know them um emotional learning but then there i i may say i'm not really good with it as well too and then some of the kids uh homeroom or advisory it's like uh, what are we doing here um how to write i mean mm -hmm. studying how Saved, something like that so but then so there's really no gap and like mm -hmm. back in in the philippines you don't have time to talk to your neighbor you have time mm -hmm. to go to the office to the principal you know we have all those time but it's running every time yeah. you, you walk it's like you're doing it for with a purpose mm -hmm. In our class, I mean, in my school, we we should we should be in the office. I mean, we should be in school six fifty in the morning, because our first hour starts at seven fifteen. Mm -hmm. But then, what are you doing in between those times? So we have morning duty, actually for the middle school teachers. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. what, but we have morning duty. Why we do have morning duty? Because the kids are outside the campus, and the moment they don't roaming around it will be a fight or it could be something that they're going to do that i want them to do so that's why we do um um morning duty but you have a schedule for that first year i had my morning duty every monday and tuesday and then 7 15 you have your class and then after that there's only five minute passing period then class again another class and then same period so there's really no time for you to go and talk neighbor because everybody's busy and then we get uh class ends at 2 40 we get home 3 10 for teachers but if you have after school program if you do tutoring or something additional you're being paid for that so we they will we can go home at 5 45 but if you don't have any of that you can go home at three o'clock that's why we start early so we end we can go home early as well but both of you starts at eight right yeah, we started eight forty. Our classes started at nine ten. So mine is seven forty five, seven forty five. But it's the start of the zero hour, mm -hmm. and we start our class at eight forty, and then we end mm -hmm. three forty five. We end at four ten. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I I wake up early to with the, you mm -hmm. know compared to you guys, but I I, I go home early and eight ten. But sometimes I do and regarding. Regarding homeroom, we have like 40 minutes of homeroom. Imagine that. We have to spend 40 minutes with the kids yeah. and without any lessons. So we have to think about what to give to the kids every day. And there, we're, we're having like a schedule of what to do and what day. And then 40 minutes of class period too. So with you, you have like 65 minutes for each class period for your subject. For us, it's only 40 minutes. And Ours you have three. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's why, yeah, that's why they said that's the advisory or the homeroom. That's the social emotional learning mm -hmm. that you get the uh, in the trust and building relationship with your students. So that's why 30, 40 minutes. Sometimes it's I mean, we had 35 minutes before. So Miss Dharma said, um, I love that teacher Tori that and um see uh from Liza replying to Bell uh oh San Capos in New Mexico. So Bell will reply for that. Um so Miss Eliz uh, Elizabeth said uh, she loved her journey, so please tell more. I'm not sure we're too Two hours, you know. Been here for <laughs> yeah, two hours. This is like the longest <laughs> we've had. Yeah. We, we usually have it for one hour long. Oh Which is yeah. hour. Than two hours. We were, you know, we, we're enjoying. We're enjoying this de-stressing. And we have like 25 shares right now. So 
Mr. Sita said, can you give us a link regarding the requirements for teaching in the U.S.? Thank you, everyone. Requirements. I think um, we don't have really the link for that. But if you happen to scan or, you know, get over, if you sign, if you, um, what's it called, subscribe to my YouTube channel, I believe I, I, I have a video for that on what are the things that you need to prepare in going here. But you should have at least two years of teaching experience. You should be, uh, you should have your uh, license, your PRC. Right. So, so those are the things, the most important thing to prepare. Just a follow up from Miss Paris. Um, just a follow up question regarding Beppo Shay. Will the teacher show payments for visa sponsor or will the school have to pay their share? Thank you so much, teachers. By the way, I'm scheduled for pre screening interview with Beppo Shay. So, yes, Miss Sheena, you want to answer this? Well, I'm yeah, getting my charger. Okay. I think in my case, it was like a half, half, the school district paid half of it and um, I paid half of it, but there are instances and um, another teacher from the school district, my friend, she actually didn't pay anything. It's a school district. So there is this, um, I think in a year, like a limited number of spots for the visa sponsor that the school district can accommodate, which means okay. that you yeah which means that it, it maybe depends on the school district i don't know with you guys because every state is different right that's just like the the thing there so you are fortunate if the school district has that allotted you're still like um uh, available slot for you to get a visa sponsor for for the school district to to shoulder all the expenses but in my case i paid see oh, lucky uh that's two out of 1,000 applicants <laughs> that the school district will pay. Because my case, Paul's case, we paid everything. Yes, we did. We, no one paid for us. It's, my, it's ourselves. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I had to go off town because I had to get my charger because my battery's going off. No problem. We don't have a also share the dress code for teachers in every can you share that guys when um it's it's there's no dress code dress code actually as long as there's no plunging neck lights for the girls <laughs> have know. decent attire yeah have a decent attire you know and anything that gives you uh confidence when it comes to dressing up in front of the class, it's it's really okay. You can for for the guys, you can come in with just plain shirt, or collared shirt, or long sleeves. It doesn't matter. For girls, I don't know. They just go whatever they're comfortable in. Safest with. safest would be business casual. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I know where he's, I don't know. I asked you the same question before and before I got here, right? Um, we have to wear slacks or whatsoever. Yeah, but I think it's business casual. I go to school with my jeans on, right? So long as you have like a top that is, there are even times that I would just go to school like on my shirt, just just wearing shirt. And, and you're right, just so long that nothing revealing. You have to, of course, like remember that you're a teacher, like look decent. So just that. Yeah. Oh, dress code, but I believe just recently really a lot to wear pants, jeans. But uh, for example, it's like a pay Thursday or payday Friday, so we can have jeans. And uh, yeah, I think even school district we're not allowed. They're not allowed to wear jeans unless, of course, meant uh, the principal. It's uh, we can wear jeans or there's an activity in the school, so jeans. Something like that. I and, love my school district. <laughs> well, they they right. wanted to make sure. I mean, I, it didn't matter before when I came here. They really uh, ill, but it it's it's, it's a, from the district office. So of course, and to wear our school ID, and I'm used to that. But it's right now it's mandated that we have. So I request. 
tested for another Zoom school ID because I'm not I'm not using it anymore. So yeah, it depends. It depends to really to your school district. But to play it to make it safe, formal, right? Yeah. But I also wanted to teach in Alaska. Good luck if you want to pursue that. Go on. You know, yeah. the dream. It's go so wherever cold you in there. Go, but, but if you want, we you want to go there. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But I, I, I would suggest whichever the first job offer comes in, or whichever is favorable for you. Yeah. <laughs> and when it comes to salary. Uh, yeah. Go for it if if you think it, it, it's working. It's uh, you're the Yes, why not? From uh, chat. So I believe when we were talking about the so two hours planning. I'm not sure. Maybe she's referring to, to I mean, here in the U.S. So we have one. Uh, uh, how do you say Colossians three two? That's his name. What from California? Filipino teacher aid here. So hi, hi, Colossians. <laughs> yeah, a Bible verse. Well, I he's the one who teach in the, in in Alaska. I did not graduate as a teacher and it's in teaching pre uh, presently working in elementary school for teachers um i think but i would rather um have you uh, finish your master if you don't i mean but i mean this is always the question you, they are they're not teacher graduate but they have because I have a friend, Chris, friend, she's not an education graduate, an IT, I believe, but then she she had teaching as well, but she finished her master's in math. And yeah, she doesn't have any problem when, when she's here, but I know some that they, they don't have, uh, they have education graduate. They don't, they don't have master's. They had to take some tests here in Arizona and uh, we have a viewer from so uh, that's sir Aldwin and yes hello um, konnichiwa from oh, Japan yes. still from back they I only have, have a unit in elementary but last year I took my master in MA management here in the US it's alignment you know so master's degree in management how are we going to lead teaching but if i were you know well i would rather um, ask get an agency so they can assist you with that they're they're knowledgeable about that <laughs> than us we yeah because it's answer it's those technicalities what if we we answered you wrong and then you know just to just to make sure um let's see from maribeth it's just an observation language teacher can't uh, easily land there maybe they preferred more you know english native speakers i agree i agree um ela compared to math science and sped they are really a big catch. Go, it's not really that I'm just lucky. Maybe I don't know what did I do. <laughs> I was hired, but yeah, right now with the shortage of teacher, I I don't think so. I I, I believe there's a lot yes. of DLA teachers right now coming in here. So I'm not sure about kids. Um, DLA is not. Not only for native speakers, uh -huh. because what we are teaching only grammar, what we're teaching mm -hmm. here is how to comprehend. Yes, Text, mostly uh, the, 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 the ELA is focused on reading mm -hmm. comprehension and building skills upon those comprehension, uh, comprehension or mm -hmm. reading uh, skills that they have. So really, it, it doesn't matter if you're a native speaker or not. And I, and I think one thing as well is not just 
um, it requires you to be really a native speaker. What I observe is that the principals and the principals and the uh, human resource people they would prefer people who have really good background. Um, like like with my, with my friends, uh, the principal are very the principal is, was very willing to wait for them because they're considering the work ethics. Right. So it's not necessarily that you are a local here for you to get English uh, uh, teaching position in particular, but it's really with like how you do in the interview, what your like, I think it's, it's more of the competence and your character as a teacher. So it's not I don't think it's a requirement or it's a it's a, it's a thing to be a local or a native speaker for you to land an English language art teacher here. If you're going to apply in Canada as a teacher, like a teacher, you will have the hard time for that because French. But if you're a man, you can teach in Canada. So, but here in the U.S., I think that's that's a big point because, like we said, it's more attention. Citing text-based evidence, there's uh, the Arizona standards, or uh, most of them mm -hmm. comprehensions. So it doesn't really matter at all. So I, I, yeah, there's a lot of ELA teachers that just came this school year. And so but I think one, give up. Just, mm -hmm. go on, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. But I think, and um, one challenge is that um, if you are an ELA teacher, of course, it is an expectation that you are good with the command of the language, right? Mm -hmm. Because you will be teaching their language and you have to make sure that you are at some point like the same as the level of how they speak because you're teaching them their language. Do I make sense? I mean, like that is that is something I think that English, um, it's given Filipino English, te like teachers, English teachers from the Philippines have like good command of the language, but that could be something that you have to bear in mind that if you want to teach here in the U.S. their language, so you have to carry yourself the command of the language for you to 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 be easily um, get hired by by the people here. Yeah, you should know how to yourself. English teachers, teachers <laughs> yeah. are good with that. We know <laughs> we know how to you know play with the words. That's why. And from Ruby. Just I just want to add there, most visa sponsors will require a degree in education for J1 to try to get an MA in education. Yes, that's correct. Thank you, Ruby. So I believe this answered the questions of um, Noel. And when is the best time in the U.S. from uh, Elizabeth? I think the best time to apply, uh, I mean, right for this school year, there's no answer available already uh, as what I've Heard, but then some said that by first week of August, they're asking for the state to give another that's for visa sponsors. But I'm not sure how you know how true is that. But I think the best U.S. is <laughs> anytime <laughs> or no the peak the peak season is I believe when yeah. January would be a good month to apply for. You look out for the districts opening already because mm -hmm. they might be opening slots already or positions for the next school year. But some still wait for the end of the school year to open their slots for the next school year. So um, schools end at May, right? Or June. And some school districts open June, the yeah. positions around those months. But if, yeah, if, by if the, the month school district month. has already opened it around January, you may apply on, on those times because those are really, really good enough. Uh, those months will give you enough time to prepare for your documents if you get hired. Yes, that's right. So January, start uh, start uh, uh, your application. No, right. Wait for um, an interview. So Ms. Mary Beth said, I got uh, in English and doc of education management but yeah i don't know just saying well it could but it's not your time yet you know maybe, maybe who knows for the next year there's a working visa h1 prepared for you it could mm -hmm. be not right now but next school 
just don't give up. You have your masters. You have an edge. Uh, so it could be. It's just the timing. Uh, everyone watching here in Thailand. <laughs> and Miss Meredith just wanted to say thank you for the key points. Appreciated it much. And take care, guys. And, and um, BS said major in technology and life economics. Is there a, any possible that I can be hired in the U.S.? I have leadership thank you for the positive response sometimes there are school there are one teacher who is a doe teacher who was here he had a um a working visa but doe but it's like what's it technician something the auto part like that yeah electronics or yeah so yeah it's someone as well uh doe which is a you know, cooking. So cookery. If you if you apply, maybe just like with mape, you don't apply mape teacher because they don't for PE. You can apply for that. They are looking for art teacher. They are looking for a music teacher. So if you know that, then you can. Or if you are a TLE, maybe if you're if they are looking for anything that talk, you can. You can apply for that. And uh, the question: Apply teaching English in the U.S. As a teacher, which I'm currently as well here in Thailand. Um, you, you definitely need a license for you to apply as a an, an English teacher here in, in the United States, because that's one yeah, thing that that's a requirement. Really certificate. Yeah. Right. So if you want. At your your teaching license, if you want to, since you're teaching already, then uh, make it uh, make it uh, uh what make official. it to yeah, official for for that. Uh, um, no, the so, same thing I think. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I think Ariane Ariane just wants to say also pay for her just like what you had. So good. Thank you very much for that. We don't have that. <laughs> uh, and you know, I am a BS. I am a BS. I major in English with master's in education, major major in international certificates in TOEFL, uh, TOEFL, or an education. Is it okay to apply in their USA? I think, yes, you can, but you need to have your your, your license because they need that in teaching certificate. And yes, you have the credentials. Yes, you can. And Joanna said, "Thank you for the positive response." And um, we're over, not really overdue, but then <laughs> it's two. We're here for two hours and thirty-seven minutes, guys. And it's ten thirty-eight already, uh, Colorado time, right? And, and right. Uh, I think there's no more questions. And uh, we had, uh, I had a great time, guys. And I. Fun. Oh, yes. we were able to share. Yeah, we, we were able to share good things at those teachers, you know. And oh, we'll overcome it. The first he will, he will. So he will. I must. I have to. <laughs> yeah, no Philippines until we comply the the five years. Except you know what's her plan. <laughs> Ah, she has a <laughs> lot of plans. <laughs> we'll see what yeah, so yeah, you can thank you. Yeah, for the positive insights. I have an interest to come and teaching in the US someday. Yes, go for it. Join us. We want to join join the the forces, the teachers forces here, you know, because it, it it's it's a sample questions for the interview, please. Um Hazel Abib, I made um I had a video on my YouTube channel on how are you, and um, I'm I, I'm not not sure if you already subscribed. So please do subscribe. And so I believe it's time for us to say not really goodbye, but to see you soon. I'm not sure when are we going to have this, but hopefully we can. And uh, nothing that we gain, we don't. But then just first and talking and sharing what we have. So. Wanted to say before we end the stream. 
Oh, somebody is asking your YouTube channel, Anne. I'm going to type it here. Good night, Peter. America. So, yeah, I think I, I, ha I have it here. All right. Yes. So, thank you so much, Miss Sheena, Paul, for being with me. For the, you're welcome. You know, I you're know. welcome. No worries. My, our pleasure. Paul pleasure. Yes. yes. <laughs> Paul doesn't we did it, you know, for all of you guys and for me as well. So thank you so much and um see you soon guys. Yeah, the rock and roll yeah. for everyone. See you. Bye. Have a great weekend. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Bye.